And um, in the studios, we have been joined by um, CDA Tunis, is the National Publicity Secretary of the main opposition, the APC. Um, CD, uh, good morning and welcome to the show. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me. Okay. Um, by uh, Lauren, uh, Lai Lauren Slima, is the National Publicity Secretary of the ruling Salian People's Party, the SLPP. Good morning, um, uh, Lauren Slima, and welcome to the show. Good morning. It is a pleasure having you. Let, quickly, let me read this notice from the Electoral Commission for Salyun before we start the discussion. It says, distribution of voter registration cards by the ECSL will commence on Friday, 17th March 2023 and will end on Sunday, 26th March 2023. Distribution will take place at all 3,630 centers across the country and um, in the 16 electoral districts at the same time, starting at 7 a.m. to 5 p.m. daily. So uh, this is a notice for Miss CSL. She'll be getting ready to go pick your voters um, registration card starting on the 17th and ending on Sunday the 26th of March 2023. Uh, once more, Sidi, welcome to the show. I'll start with you. I suppose you've got um, a correspondence of seeing um, the statement from um, the PPRC. What, what does the um, APC make of that? You've been fined over um, um, 100 million units. Yeah, uh, we, we've seen the, the correspondence, of course. Um, we are a bit shocked shocked in the sense uh, according to the PPRC itself uh, the incident or the song was never played during the national delegates conference the song was not played on the premises of the all people's congress in Makini what they are saying that uh, after the conference when we elected our flag bearer and when he left to return home because I must be clear that we did not have a rally mm -hmm. in McKinney. So they are stating that we had rally. No, we never had rally in McKinney. When our flag bearer left and went home, people on the street, somebody played the song. You mm -hmm. know, we had set speakers around, so somebody played the song. So uh, in that case, the song was played not in the presence of any authority within the part in the party the song was played not on the premises of the party and the song was played not during the the entire three day of our national delegates conference so we have received it so we'll you're not taking to, responsibility is well we'll have to engage the pprc on that mm -hmm. you know the fact of the matter is they had previously written a letter they warned us and we engaged them and we made commitment that uh, you know, we will not allow any profanity or uh, any attack or personal you know, wordings uh, aiming at any individual. And that is why even when we made the mass, um, you know, the triumphant entry into Freetown, we were very civil and you did not hear any of such during that because we had control, we were present. We, you know, we ensure that uh, we, 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 we you but know, but this is a song. This is a song, um, specifically one of the songs that that the PPIC is highlighting. That was performed when um, your your flag bearer now was um, you know launching his campaign in McKinney, and senior party members were there too. Uh, do, do you know the <laughs> artists who uh, did that song? And um, you've asked to for the song to be recalled so that it cannot be played in any of your activities. Well, we've already we've already. Uh, done that. I mean, we. I. I do not specifically know the artist, but of course, after PPRC brought it to our attention, as a political party, we made commitment, mm. and that is why you know, in any of our activities, we don't allow that particular song to play because we know a uh, PPRC has issue with it, as well as any other song that uh, you know they may have issue with, or any song as a matter of fact that uh, may be targeting individuals or may even mention people. We as a political party want to focus on the issues. Now that we have our structures in place, we have our executive in place, we have our flag bearer, we want to focus on addressing the issues that we alleviate the problems that we are faced with 
as a nation. So Let, let's we make it an excerpt quickly. This. Let's make it an excerpt of, of, of the, the, the letter from the PPIC. It says, unfortunately, the warning was not heeded to our supporters of your party on the 20th February 2023, and in the presence of the national leader elect and flag bearer designate, Dr. Samoa Kamara, again hold public insult and provocative songs against His Excellency the President and his wife, the First Lady of the Republic. That I can challenge, you know, vehemently, because I know that nothing of such happened in the presence of our leader, an elected flag bearer. That I can challenge. And, and you know, that is the letter they wrote. Mm -hmm. But all, on all of their engagements on the media so far that have been present, that is not what they stated. Mm -hmm. You know, they stated that, you know, after the election, after the flag bearer left, you know, people who followed behind played the song. So you cannot say it happened in the but, presence. But it's in, your, it's in your activity. It's no, in your program. It, I, I so so why, why pushing away responsibility? Why I am not, not pushing away responsibility. I am pushing away the statement, mm. the connotation that it happened in the presence mm. of our flag bearer. The connotation that it may have happened in the presence of the leadership of the party. And that is what I'm pushing away from. Because I was present the whole time, and I know that no, such did not happen. But, in but, the but as a political party, you've not come out openly with a statement condemning, um, you know, that song that that's we have. We, we had. We have. Uh, offici Amadou. Officially, we uh, have. But, but what we are Before, from, bef but what we are hearing from you now is shifting the blame. It no, didn't, no, 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 you know, it didn't no. happen when Doctor be in front of Doctor Samoa Kamara, but not entirely condemning. We, you the have song. to first of all understand. Mm -hmm that before we came in as executive, mm. we had ITGC, and Abdul Kabo did that. Mm. As secretary of the ITGC, he did that. He did not only stop at, you know, condemning, he also appeared on the media mm. with uh, the PPRC and made a commitment on behalf of the party, and which is the same that I'm doing here today. Mm. But what I'm also doing is defending the fact that it happened in, in, in the presence of our flag bearer. It did not. We, may, we could have stopped it if that, had, if that was the case. In fact, we, couldn't, uh, we wouldn't allow it to play because we had already told um, the MCs and everybody that no song that is not promoting the APC will be allowed to play in any of our activities. Well, was it a mistake or, um, you know, you are only condemning this now because the PPIC took it up? Um, uh, this is a song that was played at the launch of, of, of your flag bearer now at his activity. Well, I wouldn't say that, I mean, directly, because, you know, when you go to activities, so many artists are invited to perform. Maybe Were you at on that, that stage time, when he performed? Because we saw videos of people dancing to the song as well. I wouldn't recall uh, the exact moment, you know, but I'm pretty sure you may not have, if you had seen me on the video, you would have you, you've had the song. Attention. You've had the song yourself. You know, what do you After the PPRC played it, you know, I heard the song. But, but Lamrana, come on. You know, this is a song. Yes, you know, mentions were made, but of course, uh, you know, for the sanity, of our elections as a party we will not allow such song to play anymore because it is an issue for the political party regulation commission and it is also an issue you know that uh, have been raised and are, and brought to our attention and so will our dear so i'm asking the question now as the new publicity secretary of the apc do you condemn that song on behalf I of condemn, the party? Do you think I, it's, it's, it's a good song or should I should condemn be any song. I condemn utterances, regardless of who the utterances are coming from, even if it's from the president. I condemn any song. I condemn utterances that aim at tarnishing the characters of individuals running for offices, that aim at tribalizing our politics, that aim at regionalizing our politics and creating division amongst us as Sierra Leoneans. Yes, do, I do condemn. Do you condemn that song that I insults the president I and, do, his, and his wife? I do wife. condemn any song or utterances that will do just that, not only to the president, but anybody running. So also do I condemn 
people in the SLPP referring to our flag bearer as rapist, referring to former president as a thief, or anybody in the APC as a matter of fact. So also I condemn the attack and the mounting of illegal checkpoints at his station just to harass members of the All People's Congress on that day. Mm -hmm. And those are physical assaults on individuals and on Sierra Leoneans. So as we are talking about a song, mm. we must We'll definitely also come to talk, talk about, about the, uh, the other action by the PPRC. We're expecting to have the PPRC chairman um, online. Um, hopefully, he'll be joining us to talk more on their letter to the Inspector General of Police on the allegations of attack on your members. But let's move to Lai Lawrence Lima. The PPRC has also warned the SLPP, the ruling party, uh, against provocative actions or statements that, that um, are cause um, problem the other day between supporters of the APC and supporters of the SLPP around Calbata. Do you take responsibility for that? Well, in the first place, um, <clears throat> if ever that happened, I want to say... Um, Are I you saying it didn't happen? I am coming. I am, I'm going to really dilate on the context. If mm -hmm. that happened, I want to say sorry to the public and I condemn such approach. Mm -hmm. However, coming to the context of that letter, even though the party is yet to respond, um, to the letter to PPRC, I would, however, double into thinking the minds of the leadership and make a comment mm. with regards to the letter that was written to the Sierra Leone People's Party. Now, this is not the first time that the Sierra Leone People's Party had come under, uh, have come under physical attack by the All People's Congress any time they are coming out. It has happened when our party office was uh, vandalized, was invaded. In fact, the, I mean, the, the APC dominated the presence of the police and entered the party office of Sierra Leone People's Party, vandalized our party offices, beat women, and also raped them as well. We have come under a series of APC's attack, including the Unity Atar base. Even in the August 10 saga, Unity Atar base was attacked. So... Um, this probably would have been a miscalculation on the part of the police. I want to commend the, 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 the police for a very good um, job, for a job well done that they did on that day. However, this was either an oversight or a miscalculation. By who? By the police. But, but we're I'm not coming. talking about the police. We're I talking about the PPIC. Let me read, let me read what I am they coming said. there. I, I know exactly what I'm no, saying. No, let me just read for our viewers so they can understand what the PPIC is saying. They're saying, cognizant of this, a number of your party supporters operatives assemble at the said outlet singing and dancing to songs complementary to their own party and thereby provoked skirmishes between them and the APC convoy, which uh, culminated to a breach of the public peace. Uh, their conduct amounts to a disruption of the activity of political opponents and thus contravenes a section in the uh, Political Parties Act. This, this is, is what the, PPRC has said. This saying. is exactly where I'm coming. You should have <laughs> patient me. No, no, but you, 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 I, I want to know if as a party... That's where I'm you, coming. You're taking, you, you are taking responsibility. I've, start, I've started that in my opening. No, no, but you're saying if that happened, you didn't say you accept that it happened. I, I said if that happened, I am giving you... If that you're not sure that it happened. If you could allow me to land, then you'll see the Why? point I'm making. Fine. Why? You, you, you know, when, when you speak as somebody who has doubled into the university, you have to be very logical mm -hmm. in what you say. You mm -hmm. have to establish your premise and clear the basis, and then your conclusion gives what you're really requiring. Mm -hmm. I have started by saying, if that happens deliberately, I'm saying, if they did it consciously with the aim of provoking APC, mm. then we are sorry about the inconvenience that caused to the public. Mm. But if it did not happen with the view of provoking APC, but rather because of past experience, they decided to go and protect their base. And in the process, um, skirmishes occurred as a result. That was why I was coming in with the police. Mm. So what we would have expected because of past experience of the party, they have now said that we will not allow this to happen to our party, I mean, to our own party um, 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 outlet anymore. We are going to sit and protect our own area. Is there, so is what we would have expected, that's where I'm coming. Now, are you saying, are what you, we no, are expecting, no, no, no. No, Mr. Lamana, Minister, let me Mr. Minister, you are also the Deputy Minister of Internal Affairs. Are you saying citizens should pro pro provide security for themselves or it should be the police if who should If you only allow me to land, you really understand what I want no, to but say. But I'm asking you, I'm but asking you based I'm on, on what you train. said. Allow me to land. I'm still on I'm still on the flight. Go ahead and Fine. So what we would have expected, the police would have been able to, um, to foresee that ahead and then probably engage the party leadership that, okay, the APC will be plying through this route. 
you have your party outlet there. At this stage, we will not expect any of your member to occupy that particular area. And with an assurance from the police that we would ensure that we provide security, that nothing actually will happen with your, with your structure, with your party outlet, that would have been very comfortable and it would have saved that particular situation. That is why I said it was an oversight on the part of the police. And also, it was, um, it was also not intended to disrupt APC's program, but rather the people went there, the party members went there to protect their own outlet. Where, they, 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 where I have apologized, the area where I have apologized to the public because of the inconvenience, mm. is where probably they did not just go and sit quiet, but they were singing chants that had the tendency to disrupt the process of the others. You're talking so on this probability. is why I have said... Mr. Lima, you're talking on probability. I'm reading, I just read to you what the Political Parties Regulation Commission said, that your members were playing music, they were singing, they provoked the APC, and you're saying they were there to protect themselves because the police cannot provide okay. protection for w them. What is the provocation to say, Madabio, Madabioi? Mm. How does that, what has that got to do so with So you're really saying APC? that was only what they did? That was what they did. Okay. And then in the process, the APC was pelting water, mm. right? Was pelting water at the Unity Atar base, mm. and a reciprocation led into, into, into skirmishes. That is mm. what I'm saying. That it was, um, it was an oversight on the part of the police and also probably, um, well, I wouldn't want to describe it as a misconduct mm. from the part of the SLP. However, mm. such conduct was not really called for, especially at the time when the APC was, was really plying the route. And that is why I said... So you're, you're actually not trying to be clear. Are you, are you clearly saying what your supporters did was wrong? It is wrong if they did it intentionally. Mm. Um, it is not wrong if they did it based on past experience and with the view of defending their own outlets. So are you saying citizens have the right to defend themselves rather than call the police to put, provide security the reason, or defend The reason I also said um, it was also on the police to have been able to foresee right, any tendency of disrupting either the free flow or movement of the APC and to see how best they would have been proactive to have stopped that. That was why I said it was an oversight. Mm. And I started by saying, um, I apologize for any conduct, right, of the SLPP if it is perceived wrongly. However, that is why I said that it, it could not be seen as perceived wrongly because they did not go there with the intention of disrupting APC's flow. However, um, the conduct of singing chants as well, which the APC took offense out of, that was why I said sorry for that conduct. You're apologizing to the APC? No, I am apologizing to the public because it's a, if I am very peaceful. But, but the PPIC is saying the, 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 the APC are the people who were provoked. Being a peaceful man. Mm -hmm. Being a peaceful man. Mm -hmm. And honestly, Angela if even if you provoke me to a certain extent where I think you are really trying to drag me into something that will distract or disrupt the, 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 the public peace, mm -hmm. I will try to avoid and complain. But you will not go and take water and then you pelt it on people and and then spark up the whole thing. They were not peaceful. However, the SLPP actually probably overreacted by singing chants that actually got into their own nerves and then they, they, they responded to the provocation. So I am only saying sorry to the public because at least their own peace was disrupted. And we would ensure that going further, we would engage with the Sierra Leone police that such will not repeat itself. Okay, um, you, you, you wanted to react to what he's saying, but yeah, I want to ask this. It seems, in, even in these studios, in this studio, everyone is holding their ground. Between both it, of you, it, I could imagine how it will be for your supporters out there. Everyone wants to prove a point, no one is taking responsibility, and these are things that will continue. Your supporters will continue to um, rally, they will continue to campaign. No, Lamrana, it is not a matter of holding, the gr holding your ground. I mean, let us look at events. Uh, the fact is, SFPP has offices along the, the road from McKinney to Freetown, right? They have an office even in Newton. And we were moving with hundreds of thousands of people from McKinney all the way into Freetown. Why wasn't Newton touched? Their office in Newton, why wasn't it touched? Why wasn't it their office in McKinney touched? Why wasn't their office in Losar touched? You know, nobody paid it mind to the SLPP along our way. But the fact of the matter is, we've all seen the video. Mm -hmm. The boys at Calbaton said, 
Oh, nobody not go pass ya. Now we get ya. Now we stop, get ya. You really have to stop telling you under, lies. You understand? Public. Nobody not go pass ya. You are, now we get. We all we all lie, saw the mean. video. I that's, mean, that's so in situations so, like that, in situations lie. like that, as much as they have a responsibility to let their supporters, as the PPRC said, don't provoke situation, how do you also, as political party leaders, you know, ensure that um, those situations are handled in a better way where it does not disrupt public? Well, we don't the, know the what the public. We don't, that is why we said the police must investigate how it degenerated to the point of tear gas being fired but if you look at the video you will notice that the the apc folks were standing on their side all along you did not see any of them move towards even crossing the street towards the sfpp attire base they stood at the attire base throughout that video and that is why we said the police must investigate how it degenerated to the point of tear gas being fired. 40 canisters of tear gas being fired. So, I mean, As and we, we still passed through. Mm -hmm. Nothing happened. No one was attacked. So, it must, I must say this, Lamrana, throughout our procession, from McKinney to Freetown, we had confrontation with no one. The police were there. They led us through. That is why even before we came into Freetown, we, we, we asked for clearance. We showed them the route. They led the convoy into Freetown. And, you know, it is, these are all premeditated plans by the SFPP. The, the checkpoint at Hill Station, the actions of the youths at the attire base, these were all premeditated to provoke us. As, as a political you know, party, as a political party, I'll ask again. How do you ensure that uh, these possessions, these rallies, are peaceful? You know, to a point that um, you will not have the PPRC coming again. There were abusive language that will lead to provocation. Ooh. There were attacks. There were retaliations. Ooh. As leaders, how do you engage your members and supporters? We have structures, Lamrana. We are a responsible political party. We had over half a million people on the street that day, throughout, up to 2 a.m. the next day. Nothing happened except for that provocation from the SLPP. So that tells you that as a political party, we have full control, we have law, we respect law and order, and our supporters are well managed when it comes to our activities. Mm -hmm. We've held several rallies, several rallies across this country, and we've had no issue, we've had no confrontation with the police or anyone. So if the SLPP folks did not provoke uh, the situation at Calbaton, we would have had nothing absolutely to worry about as a nation. Okay. It is the same with the checkpoints at Hill Station. I repeat that because you and I know that no checkpoints was ever mounted uh, uh, at Hill Station. Why on that very day? And why target only people who were red? It is not only our Secretary General that was molested. You had several other leaders and stakeholders of the party and members of the party who were red that were molested on that day. Okay, see, Physically we'll, assaulted, beaten we'll with iron rod. So we'll come back to you. We've got the Minister of Information who have reacted to that allegation. Hopefully our producers will pull that up, then we can have a statement from him. He has officially, he was here in our studios, he reacted to that allegation. But I'll ask you again, Lima, about um, you know, your roles as polit leaders in these political parties. Um, how do you think you can you know, engage your supporters. Rallies will be happening, um, you know, campaigns will be having things like this. How do you intend to engage your supporters to ensure that, you know, um, confrontations, because it has to do with the peace and security of the country? Is in the first place, I actually admire CDU that was engaged in the, in the pond, out of the pond, in the pond, out of the pond. Because he has said that they were not attacked, and which is very clear that they were not attacked. He has said that they were able to pass through, nothing happens to them. I agree, and that is the fact. The only thing that we are disturbed by the very fact that party members were assembled at the attire base singing chants of Madabio, Madabioe. I agreed. Going forward, going forward, next time we would ensure that that actually does not happen. And we would ensure that the next time, anytime any political party is 
plying a route where we have our structures, our outlet, we would engage with the police for the police to give us the assurance that they will be able to protect our own structures, our own outlet, and we'll be able also to engage our party membership at those structures to avoid the scene on the day actually they will be passing. Or even if they have to sit there, then let them sit there in quiet and avoid anything that will lead to skirmish. Even if they attack, well, I would not say don't engage in self-defense if you see the need to defend. Mm. However, if you are unable to defend, the police is around, leave the ground, just extract and then leave it for us, we would engage with the police. But mm -hmm. we would ensure <laughs> that this election is going to be peaceful. Mm. We are not going to allow any provocation that would distract the public from the good messages we have to put out to the public on our achievements. We have achieved a lot, especially when we take cue from where we took off governance to where we are today and where we are set to go. So we have a lot to say to the public. We are not going to allow anybody to engage us in protracted arguments that is not making any meaning, that is not helping us to sell our message to the public. The, the issues of um, self-defense, um, the ONS, the PPIC, um, you know, they've been talking about political parties, um, you know, building vigilantes or sort of within um, their parties, their supporters. Y you know, how, how sure um, are you that, um, you know, your party will ensure that you seek protection from the police rather than having your supporters defending themselves, which will lead to chaos and confrontations as well. Lamana, it's, it's, it's not a strange happening to the SLPP. It is by our own very attitude of, of, of taking care and exercising cautions, exercising restraint that actually brought us into governance. Because the APC was bent on disrupting the peace of this country to be able to declare a state of emergency. We were able to bypass every of their strategy to lead us into that. And we have control of our membership. And of course, we are a disciplined party. So if we tell you, don't go there, you go there, you have to count yourself out of the party. So we have a discipline over our party, and we, we are a structured party. Okay. If anything happens at any levels, we have people we can contact. Who are those who did that? Why did they do it? Uh, CD, so I'll, we have control. See, I'll ask you, Sam, about you know, political parties building um, their own security. To, to some extent, you'll see them um, sometimes in, in military or police camouflage, behaving like they are law enforcement agencies. And you know, it sometimes it, it causes chaos and panic and confrontations as well. How do you intend to seek protection, security from the police, rather than building your own forces within your political uh, Lamrana, parties? Lamrana, we have to be very honest. I mean, the only reason why this country is peaceful is because the APC has been able to restrain its membership and supporters. Mm -hmm. The fact of the matter is we have seen the one-sidedness in the way the, the security forces have handled situations in the past. How can we have trust? But you've gone to McKinney, you held a very yeah, peaceful I'm, I'm process. Coming. You've been I'm commanding coming. the police. I'm coming. Yes, I've stated severally <laughs> that we commend the police. They were able to man, but we also know that you have bad apples among the police. We've had our offices attacked and pelted with tear gas when on the very baby. day. Let me come. Don't interrupt me. Be safe. These are the same things we are talking about. You cannot have civil engagement. You have to be arrogant quiet, quiet, and violent. You know, you say you know, something. So, I know it's in your nature. So, 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 allow him, yeah, you, 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 because you are allow acting him, rude. Please, gentlemen. So let's let him, let's that, is, that is APC. Gentlemen, but, but you are acting rude. Gentlemen, gentlemen, don't interrupt please, me. That's what I'm saying. Please, be civil. Le, gentlemen, please. Let be him, civil. Yes, let him go. The fact of the matter is, on the very day that we were coming from McKinney, look at what happened. People were, were beaten up. You know, by who? Security forces, you know, purporting to be members of the presidential guard. And why is it always when it comes to the massacre of people, when it comes to beating of people, we have to hear about presidential guards being involved. Their responsibility is to protect the president, not to be hitmen to massacre or torture or beat up people. Mm. I mean, these are That's things... That's an allegation. To, but, I mean... We've seen it. They were, they pre, they, their names came up mm -hmm. during the Padamba Road massacre. Mm -hmm. Their names came up during the massacre on uh, August 8, 9, and 10. Their names came up, you know, in other activities. And we have Lama, seen them. Have a bite to respond. Definitely on, no, listen, go ahead, we have seen them on, on, on videos <laughs> chanting, threatening to kill anyone. 
that will go against the president. We've seen the videos. So, so the question yeah, I, I mean, asked so earlier is how <laughs> do you, um, you know, rely on the state security, the police for security to protect you, your supporters when you have rallies, rather than building? Are you saying because of all this, you're building your own protection, your own forces within we, if your we, party? If we are building forces, we will not call on the police. Mm to guarantee us security or provide us security. But the fact of the matter is, we, if you have hundreds of thousands of people, we have our own protocol arrangements. Let's say, for example, if we have National Delegates Conference, we'll have protocol officers that will direct the police as to how we do our sitting arrangements. So these are people who are present. We'll also, they will also be able to help police identify people who may not be members of our party, but who are planted among the crowd to cause mayhem. These are all possibilities. And that is why we have those protocol officers around to help the police identify bad people, help the police identify those who are stakeholders that are supposed to access premises or not to access premises. Okay. So these are the relevance. But to say that we are building vigilantes for, to fight, no. Mm -hmm. I mean, we have people. We do have you the rely mass. or depend on the police to provide oh, security? Oh, yes, we do. We do. But at the same time, where the police is not present, if I am attacked, I will defend myself. Okay. It seems we have a, a clear um, definition of how uh, political parties and uh, uh, politicians or their members will want to provide security for themselves or defend themselves. But you want to react to some of the things he said? Definitely. You see, APC is nothing but a political entity that is very opportunistic. They are demagogue. They do not believe in peace. All they believe in is to look for an opportunity to disrupt the peace. But I will say, not, I will not actually double into all the lies he has actually seated here to say and also try to provoke me into <laughs> engaging in contracted argument. I will not go into that. I would say as much as this government is committed to conducting a free, fair, peaceful and transparent elections, but as a government also, we have the responsibility to ensure that the security of the state is guaranteed. We have taken due note of all the intelligence, of all activities, of movements of people, but I would say that nobody, nobody will disrupt the peace of these elections. Nobody will disrupt the peace of this country we are capable of providing the necessary security for this nation. And that one I can assure anybody, if, nobody, if, if, if they do not believe in that, then let them just try whatever is boiling underneath in their sleeve. We would, we would, we would, we would, we would crush that without even going a step. Are you, are you, so are we you, are are saying, you make, Mr. Minister, <laughs> you are the Deputy Minister of Internal Affairs, are I you mean, making a threatening statement? This is not a threatening statement. <laughs> yeah, we have had a situation from the start. But, but I'm you coming. Mentioned crush. You I'm said coming, you crush yes. We will people. crush any attempt to disrupt the peace mm. and security of this nation. Mm. Let me give you instances. Will you also expect the rights and uh, the human rights no, of don't. citizens as well? Of course, that is why when you are crushing, you do it professionally. And that mm. is why, of course, there are, there, are, there, are state, there are state security personnel who are charged with the constitutional responsibility to ensure that the security of the state is guaranteed and is protected. Mm. What we are saying, we, are, we have them on record. Even from their own flag, or even taking it from their previous leader, President, former President Cromer, he is on record to have promised to, to destabilize this nation. Their, their APC Samura is on record to say that he will make this country ungovernable. CD is on record to have said that they will mobilize and disrupt the peace of this country to an extent that they will you know, get military you know. on the streets, you understand, <laughs> to, to shoot people on sight. That is what they were, they, they, he was saying, that they will ensure they activate yeah. level three. They are on record. <laughs> Even after their flag bear raised when they were coming, every moment, every opportunity you give to the APC to speak, they have no message. They have nothing to put on the table for the people of this country I, to vote I, for I, them. I, I want to what they rely on is to seek an opportunity to actually unleash mayhem on the people I of this country. I want to clarify. But as a me. nation and as a, as a government, we have a responsibility to ensure that the security of this nation is guaranteed. I want to clarify quickly the area where you, you, you mentioned that you'll crush anyone. I want to clarify. Are you making that statement as the Deputy Minister of Internal Affairs or are you talking on behalf of the SLPP or the government itself? As a key security stakeholder, okay. anyone who attempts to disrupt the peace and security of this nation, he will be crushed professionally. Okay, by the security force. Definitely. So, 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 so is, that, is that a directive? 
It is a statement coming from a key security stakeholder mm -hmm. that's much as we are charged with the responsibility to ensure that the peace and security of this nation is maintained. But, but I would imagine the, are, the, 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 the enfor law enforcement agencies take directives from their, their <laughs> police or the military hierarchy and not from the minister. You should so, understand how governance work. Okay. You should really understand how governance work. That mm -hmm. the policy directives come from the political, the political players okay. and the strategic guidance is provided by the police themselves and the, of course that is operationalized so that's why when i talk so, I, when i so, talk so, i talk as deputy from that angle i talk as deputy minister of internal so this so, so this security agency should 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 consider this as a directive or a statement a policy statement from you as a deputy minister it's a policy statement i have no regret saying that anybody attempts on the security of this nation he will be professionally pursued, and if it, if it is necessary to be crushed, crushed for the peace and security of this nation to prevail. Quickly, you want to react? We'll take the statements, the reaction by the Minister of Information on the allegations <laughs> of the beating of your Secretary General. Do you want to react to what Yes, but let, let me say this. First of all, I must say that the time that we have enjoyed peace most under this, uh, in this country is under former President Anes by Koroma. I am not surprised that the, minister, that the deputy minister here is making such a uh, flimsy statement about crushing people. Let me say this. We have let me say, let me, let me say this. Don't interrupt me. Yes. Let me, be, let me, no, 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 let me, 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 let you this react. is a You'll democratic just country. Allow him to make his point. This is a democratic country. And that's you have to we are yourself. a responsible political party. We don't need guns. We don't need bullets. Just behave yourself. We need our pens, our fingers, and our ballot boxes and ballot papers. And believe you me, we are going to use them to silence your guns. But let me say this. Mm -hmm. We are not afraid of your security forces. We are a democratic party who will practice democracy. And if you stand in the way of trying to take away the rights of the people of this country, you will equally meet gentlemen, our forces as well. We are not afraid of your security gentlemen, forces, gentlemen, so go activate them. Recruit gentlemen. more police and army. No, no, you are not I'm going not to threaten anyone, anyone afraid. anymore. Okay. No, no. Let me you are threatening with security. Bring them on. Fire your guns. Buy more RPGs. Shoot people. We are not surprised. We have been able to massacre people at Padamba Road. Massacre people and you think you're going to go away with it. You will not get away. Gentlemen, but I'm very gentlemen, you please. behave yourself in this election. Gentlemen, Honestly, gentlemen, you, gentlemen. you also should behave yourself. City, city and because the only man. people gentlemen, that is destabilizing this nation is you. Gentlemen, right. using your forces gentlemen, to massacre innocent gentlemen, citizens gentlemen, and you think you get away with it just like that? that. Come on. Let's, I don't talk let's too much take a break that. quickly. Let's, you just let's, don't let's take a break. We'll come back to the studios. Let's take a break quickly. What are those days? Growing momentum and euphoria are the most common phenomenon in the normal day's politics. In Sierra Leone, such situation can trigger unrest, violence, among other things. February 22nd was a day set aside by the main opposition APC to return with their elected flag bearer and the newly elected party executive members, which did not turn out good for some party members. They sat on the floor, they started beating me up, kicking me with their boots and their guns and everything they had on them. They started beating us up and uh, they put pepper spray on my... He maintained that despite his vehicle was stopped and such on the way by the presidential guards, they were still allegedly beaten up. They told me outrightly that the president told them to beat us up. I asked them again and again, they told me that that was the instruction they got from President Bill. I told them to take me to President so that he would know the kind of person they are molesting. They said they don't want to know, he's giving them instructions and they're going to comply with it. Aside from the APC National Secretary General, another person alleged to be a victim is said to be the mayor of Freetown Municipality, Yvonne Akisoya, who said... My driver um, decided to use that route as well, not knowing about the checkpoint. He said he was beaten um, 
I understand because my car has a picture of Samara Kamara on it. But not only was he beaten, what I'm deeply concerned about is that my laptop was taken from my car and is now in the possession of the presidential guard. Several government and opposition persons over the years have all claimed to be victims of intimidation, elections, violence, and political tension, among other things. The recent allegations, the country's communication minister, Mohamed Rahman Swari, says it's not too stressing that President Bio cannot order the beating up of anybody, nor the seize of any laptop. He cannot order the beating down of anybody, right? This is a very bad start for the, for the newly elected APC Secretary General. In one breath, he was sitting conveniently there with Tish, with Polo, and everything intact. One hour later, he showed with a torn Polo and all of that. He has to keep this conversation honest. Because when you aspire to lead our country, you have to have honesty as a hallmark of your character. The allegation by the main opposition APC stalwart does affect good governance or democracy, or is there something behind it? The things you have spoken about, about the Secretary General, it's almost proven even before it makes its way uh, to, to the police that it was made up to attract sympathy and to hoodwink right-thinking members of the public. I mean, how could you do two photos in the same, in the same one, one hour? Rans for McLean, AYV News, Freetown. Many thanks to Ransford McLean for that report. I was, trying to say, I was trying to set that context for you to understand that there has been that reaction from, um, you know, the Minister of Information saying, um, your Secretary General has not been honest with, with his allegations. I mean, you, you had his explanation. Mm. Just before the, the Minister of Information spoke, mm. you played excerpts mm. of his video. He was attacked twice on the scene, on the same scene. He was first you know, taking, you know, pepper spray, beating. Somebody took the video of that initially. So when the video went out, they got even more angry and went on him again, put him on the floor. It was during that period that he got his T-shirt torn. So the second video was taken after the second beating. The first video went out. Later, the second video went out. So that's mm. exactly what happened. And you still hold on to that story as Oh, of course. I mean, the fact of the matter is he's not the only one mm. that was attacked. You heard from the mayor. Karamo Kaba was also, uh, also attacked. Other members of our party, AIG Karo Kamara, former, was also beaten up on the same night. So he's not the only one. The f we had people on the street that day going after known members and supporters of the APC attacking them, beating them, you know, and why was the checkpoint mounted in the first place? Lima, why um, was it li mounted? Li Lima, I want to ask, um, you know, you are in governance and, um, you know, you mention about the peace and security of this nation and its importance, even as we move on to elections. What are the assurances? The opposition have been making these allegations that um, security forces um, are handling their members. Um, what's the assurance that, um, you know, um, security, peace and security will be upheld as we move on to elections? You see, Lamana, <clears throat> I have said this before, that the APC has no good intention and they do not mean well in these elections. So all they are looking forward to is to preach falsehood to use that as an opportunity to disrupt the peace of this country. And we, how can you imagine <laughs> a poor secretary general of a political party telling lies on the president that the president instructed his men to beat him up? Come on, is that how, is that how you want to make relevance on your, you want mm. to make yourself look relevant? Who is gonna, who is gonna really accept that story? Mm. How can you be beating up, you have the opportunity to even speak if, if, the, if, if actually how he claims that he was beaten up, he was pepper spray. Look at the man talking, very healthy. Is that, is that a man that was beaten up? So you, you have to be honest to the people of this country. Okay. You talk to people as if they are naive, they do not have a common sense to be able to decipher between falsehood and truth. No. Get Bring yourself me. out as somebody who is responsible, as an organization that is responsible, even when you are <clears> talking. <throat> talk something that is factual. Even if you are, that's, even, he's, he's, he's not even lying with confidence. Gentlemen. So, but what I'm saying as a party, mm -hmm. we have always ensured 
that the peace and stability of this country is upheld. I mean, it's uphold. You understand? And this is even why, when we are in opposition, when the president was suppressed, he was molested, he was harassed in every shape or form, he kept the peace. Even to the extent, even on the day of pulling, his office was attacked. On to that day, when we came out, we said, no, enough of this. So if the president has been able to keep his calm against APC harassment, against APC's attitude of breaking the peace of this country in order to declare a state of emergency, to prolong themselves in power, we have been able to bypass all of that. We have come to power and we have inherited government at a stage when the economy is at the brink of collapse, was at the brink of collapse. All state institutions they was discredited at a time when we lost international credibility in this nation. We have come with good policies, sound policies. We have been able to achieve a lot against the backdrop that we inherited this, this, this country in a state of okay. almost rottenness. We have achieved a lot to tell the people why they should see the SLPP as a blessing, why they should see the SLPP as a party that means well for the development of this nation. Therefore, as a party, we are very responsible not to subject or to succumb to the dictates of the opposition in deraying the peace and security and stability of this nation. And that is why, by constitutional mandate and statutes, the security forces are charged with the responsibility of ensuring that the peace and stability of this nation is guaranteed and creating the opportunity for every Sierra Leonean to thrive. Finally, and that is what, as a government and as a party, we would ensure that it happens. Finally, Sidi, I want to ask, you know, there's been tension between both of you this morning. This is on national TV. People are watching. What message do you want to leave with Sierra Leoneans? We are like four months to the elections, and there is already some tension between the two main political parties. The security and peace of this country is very important. What will you want to say to citizens of this country? We have always assured our supporters and will continue to assure them that we will ensure their rights are protected, their voices are heard, and their will is reflected on the results that will come out in the forthcoming elections. We have always called on them and will continue to call on them to be law abiding. But what we will not do also is to sit by and allow anyone anyone to trample on their rights. We've heard the statements from the Deputy Minister of Information. We heard the statement from the Electoral Commission as South. And we put all of these pieces together in our, and we know exactly what they, where they are heading. Mm -hmm. And that is what we are not going to allow. In as much as we are calling for calm and we will continue to call for calm, but we will also not sit by and allow anyone to prevent us from participating in the democratic dispensation and to trample on the rights of our membership and our supporters. And we'll also, we'll also not allow anyone to distract us from addressing the real issues. Okay. If the government is confident that they <coughs> have done well, they have done well for this we country. We need to end it there. Let them allow the people to We need to, to end speak. it there. Lima, I'll ask you the same thing about assuring citizens, the public, that, um, you know, this whole process will go on peacefully without disrupting anything from the ruling party side of it. The SLPP's mantra is one country, one people. And we believe that the one country, one people can only be achieved when we, ach when we believe in the unity, freedom, and justice. That is, we cater for every Sierra Leonean, whether you are a member of SLPP or not. We believe you are a Sierra Leonean. You have right to live in the society. You have right to enjoy uh, your, your rights without any hindrance. And we would ensure that as a party in governance, we would ensure that a very peaceful and a transparent atmosphere is created for these elections. Okay. But as a party um, in governance as well, as a government, we would also ensure that the security of every Sierra Leonean is also guaranteed. Thank and we you. would ensure our membership conducts themselves in a very peaceful atmosphere. Thank you very much, Lilo. And Slima, Publicity Secretary of the ruling SLPP, and Sidi Yatin is uh, Publicity Secretary of the main opposition APC. Thanks for your time, gentlemen.